research I was doing of people who are coming into the talk and, and guys who are saying they join, I just sort of like evaluate and say, um, what, what's the level that we are going to be working with? So try as much as possible and engage me, ask questions. I will also be asking you questions if you can answer. Don't worry, they're not like algorithm questions. Okay, maybe they are, uh, but let's see, you never know. Um, and so, so let's try it. So I, I, I'll go first because it's better for me to like start by shooting either myself or shoot something on the leg. Uh, so here's my question. Um, and you can just like join, go to slido.com and then type in that number 40991 and uh, answer, answer that question. And as you answer, I'll start seeing them here. Um, how would you rate your C++ knowledge level? Are you, you know, like, are you, mm -hmm. anyone? Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for like some answers. It's, it's like a very short-ish one. Uh, I'll start answering, I think I'll start seeing. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyone? Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for them to start displaying. I know you're like what we're 16. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So just like give, give me give me that feedback. Let's see what's your knowledge level. No, just type it in there, uh, Stephen. Just type it in the in the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm seeing the first person has typed. So go to that link, uh, slido.com, and then uh, type in that number. So just go to slido.com, and then there yeah, I'll start seeing your answers there. Yeah. So one person has replied. Yeah, so slider.com, and then when you see it, you'll just see the, yeah, there's literally like you'll see something like a code there. So that code is what you enter. You enter you enter your, that number, 40991. So once you enter that 40991, uh, just stay with it there. Yeah, so I'm seeing one person has replied. I hope, I hope guys have not like disappeared. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, mm -hmm. One person has replied. Another person also said, yeah, second one, beginner, however, I understand algorithms. Okay, good, awesome, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing intermediate, beginner. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the spellings, you can just like write anything. <laughs> I'll, I'll know like which one is which one. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh -huh. Six people. Mm -hmm. I guess most people are on the beginner intermediate one. I'll know the, the results like as it's happening. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we have we're 16. Yeah. So if you need like 10, 10 is a good threshold, sort of like evaluate it whether guys are there or not. Oh, guys have never coded. That's actually good. But I've done bits in Python. That's actually good also. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, 10 is good, the 17, 10 is good. Uh, I always work with like a third or half, a half, half is good. So um, it's going to be a little bit, um, not too heavy, but I'll try and make it as simple as possible. And so like point you at certain directions for, for the parts that you do understand um, or you don't understand that is. Um, but please, if you have any questions, just try and, and like type them somewhere and you can post them there and then we'll try and see if you can answer them after this. Um, so the other question now is, um, in one one, how would you describe your experience learning C++? Either you're self-taught, you've tried to learn it. That's for the guys who've learned, tried to learn it. Or the guys who are totally beginners and they're like, you know what, I'm to try and learn this. Or you are in uni at some point in your life or in a training institution at some point in your life. And you probably tried learning it. So what was your experience? Yes, I know it's self-taught, but what was your experience? Was it frustrating? Was it fun? Was it easy? Was it... Was it challenging or was it, you know, so just give me, give me, give me those answers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you come to the Q and A again, yeah. So the polls are there. Experience learning C++. So just leave, leave the window open. It will be automatically refreshing the question. So you don't need to like type, go again to slide, it just like automatically come. Mm -hmm. So try. Yeah. Self-taught. Yeah. I'm seeing self-taught. So how was the experience? Was it frustrating? Good. Sorry, I'm starting with this so that I bring everyone's attention. It's, it's usually uh, great sometimes to start with this controversial stuff uh, so that you see how many people can. 
Yeah. So like just have it. Yeah. Um, ah, interesting. It was uh, easier than I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. Not easy because I don't have many people who do who code in C++. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, easy learning the concepts. However, I couldn't convert concepts to real world applications, especially web apps. Fair point. Very fair point. Trust you me. <laughs> You're not alone. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, so I'm seeing like, should we, should we like move to the next one? Um, ah, okay. Wait. Let let let's give more time. I'm seeing guys are typing paragraphs. So, um, yes. So, real applications is a huge challenge. Learning concepts could not convert them into real world, especially the web apps part um easier than anticipated oh wow, that's fantastic um yeah actually it's true there are not many people who actually code in c plus plus i sort of maybe know why uh a friend of mine was joking with me and told me that when they had us doing the c plus plus stuff they were like do you want to have white hair uh, i see that's where you're headed and then i replied to him yeah yeah i'm getting old man can't keep up can't keep up i want to stay on this old people language that's the belief that's the joke we are having with them and and they say you're gonna have white hair very soon i don't know whether they've started appearing maybe yeah but i don't know okay cool so six is good enough again let's move on to the next slide um so it's it's interesting and, and thank you so much for your answers it's, it's interesting how um you we're sort of like in this phase where where we are, we, are, we are looking at C++ and guys are having all these like mixed reactions towards it. So from even the answers itself, it's sort of like a representation of the world. You have people who say it's either too easy to learn, other people are like, it's too hard to learn. So they, as, as every intro starts, you know, people are usually curious to find out like, who is this person who's talking to us? Uh, who the hell are they? You know, um, it's like a tradition thing. So uh, I'm just going to say, um, so, so you know already, my name is Frank Tamre, and uh, I build software. I am a YouTuber, you can search for Frank Tamre on YouTube or the convo. So the convo we do it with um, Sumet. Um, it's like we've, we've paused after like one season, we are resuming um, a week or two weeks from now, we start like having episodes. And mostly we talk about like business startups-ish stuff. And uh, maybe season two is going to be like very interesting. The other one is, um, I do swim and run. Um, it's a fact. It's not like I don't. I'm not like I don't go and play around with goats. I like to do sweep uh, for like long distances um, and for fun. And then running is something I picked up this year, and it's 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 a very interesting discipline. So um, yeah, in another world, maybe I've been a mermaid. I mean, God knows, uh, a black mermaid for that matter. Um, and then I'm also a teacher and instructor. I teach kids and give lectures. So this is both companies, schools, conferences, so then so that's that's where I am. And, and mostly I'm passionate about the kids because I feel like these are the people who are going to change. And, and the way they play around with code is very interesting. Like they don't have the pressure of like going to work. They really have fun writing it. So that's that's the thing. And then yeah, small spaces farmer. I, I I really love this. Uh, I'm, I'm currently doing research. If maybe I'll do a video of like a tour of like the way this setup office looks like. It's I have a garden down here and, and it's like it grows like vegetables and then you have others outside, you know, and like trying to like research on can you use less uh soil. So currently I think I use uh thirty percent soil, like soil, soil, soil from outside and it's like tries to grow it. But it's also techy because there's some tech stuff that I'm trying to do with it. And then I also build communities just in case you see me somewhere. It's it's the same person, Tamzi, Chris Tamre or something like that, amongst other things. Now so I don't bore you with all these many intros. So in, in the in the in the talk that we have of uh, deep dive deep dive in C plus plus for building scalable software, it's uh, essentially like four key themes um, uh, quadrupled into one talk. And, and that the, and that one those four key themes that are there is we have C plus um, plus as the language, and this is like on a very surface level of the talk. And then after that, again you see it's the word deep dive. So then there's this deep dive into this C plus plus um and after you do this deep dive the third theme is scale uh what are you thinking of what is scale to to to, to people and what does scale mean to software engineers or to software developers or to startups or to companies what does scale mean and then after that there's also this um whole uh, conversation about scalable software and what that means uh and and, and and of course, for me, I like I don't like like just giving a talk like that. It's good for me to show you like examples. And so the way I've sort of like structured it 
and renamed it is around a short C++ story, a scalable software, C++ for scale. And then just giving like an example of like on mobile and why I'm using mobile is because I am primarily a mobile developer that is for flat and Android. So it's, uh, I'm going to start off with C++ and, 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 uh, and deep dive. So when, and forgive me for not going to go into like into a store, there are beginners here, so many beginners, but I'm not going to bore you with the conversation around when was C++ founded? Who was the, who's the person who's created it? I'm not going to talk about all that. Um, but I'm just going to sort of like try and scheme through because I'm going to combine C and C++ and a deep dive on it um, very quickly before we focus on the core thing, which is building this scalable software. Um, so, <coughs> so you 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 you. You, you, you have to talk about this part because I know in every talk we have beginners and we have also experienced people. And so what C++ is, I would define it as just a programming language that you would use to create apps if you have a need for high performance. And um, when, when I say high performance, we're going to talk about that because this is like so many things inside one thing. We're going to cover that like a little bit later. And so in this terms of like a short C++ story, the big question that people ask is, who and what uses C++? And this is, the funny part is, I'm going to use the who to answer the what also. And so the who is you have Adobe systems, and this is your Photoshop, your Illustrator, your After Effects, your um, Adobe Premiere, I mean the whole Creative Cloud family of applications. And then you have Google with their Google Chrome applications and other bits and pieces of it. Because for you to be able to process all that um, amount of data, Yes, you can have Java built on it, but then you can also have C++ interfaced into it. Um, and then you have Microsoft with the operating systems that we have across. It's easy for you to say, not easy for you to say, like they use it for, for, for that whole bit of helping it to perform, uh, helping in terms of performance. And these are what you hear me saying all through and all through, performance, performance, performance. And then you have Autodesk. And these are like Maya, um, 3D sort of like creation of applications. Um, Apple too, um, and uh, with, with, with Apple, they're like, they're like the bits and pieces of it that they have actually used to, so that they can actually directly communicate to a hardware. And then you have Intel with their microprocessors. And this is like actually where I started my whole C++ journey while I was working at Intel some few years back. Um, so so that's, that's the thing. And so once we do know the what and the who is using it, um, the other thing is that, yes, we said it's going to be a masterclass and it's definitely going to be a masterclass. But for the beginners, one of the most important things that I think is important for you to know is that C++ is, is an object-oriented programming language. And when you talk about object-oriented programming language, if I was to explain to you some of these core features in terms of like, um, like let's say I'm imagining you're like six years old, and this is in no offense, like an insult, and this is because we have... Um, most of the places that you go to, they, they'll have this, like, explain to me, like, I'm six years old. Like, when you go to an interview, they'll tell you to explain what is a class. And um, what a class is, is I'd, I'd like to use this, I'll use this, like, um, example, because me just stating what it is, you can easily Google this and you'll find out the definition of a class is what, it's like a model or standard from where the capability of what an object can do is created. And then an object is the entity with a state of a behavior. Uh, method is uh, this is like something that can modify the class and would apply across all instances of that class. And then an instance is like an object type. You let's think about it in this terms, um, in terms of like, I'm going to explain it now in, in the practical sense of it all. So think of a mug, um, and this would be a standard mug like this one here that I have. And this is not a mug, it's like a glass or something. But if you are a high school, like the high school I was in, having a very big mug was really good for you because we used to serve is to serve us with uh, porridge, and 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 I'm seeing some of my some of the old boys from that school in the call, um, and so these mugs would go and use it all around. It's made of plastic, very big, but some made of glass like this one. Um, and so, if you think of a mug, so the blueprint that is, you know, you don't just make a mug if you're making it in the factory for very high for, for everyone. Like if you're making it for many people, you have to design it and say, I want the mug to be this size, you know, this is the circumference of it and this is the height that it's going to have. And so for this mug, that whole design, that whole blueprint for the mug design, that would be the class description. And so the mugs that are being manufactured from that blueprint, 
the mugs themselves, those are the objects of what? Of that class. And so this specifically, this was this design that was made, forget the color or anything, this would be the object itself. The blueprint that was used to produce this would be the class. And so a method would be the various types of mugs that you can have. So let's say we can have one that is uh, like this is pink, um, and then apart from pink, you can have another one that is like black, and you're just defining them, you know. And you'd have another one, maybe like this one is checkered. It's it's not soft. It's like rough a little bit. And so you'd have a rough one, you'd have a soft one. Um, but they all made from the same blueprint, you know. You're just like modifying one or two bits of it. Uh, and so that would be the method. Now, in terms of instances, are uh, now like this type of a map. You see this checkered, pinkish. Forgive me if I'm really destroying colors, but checkered pinkish mud would be an instance of that class. And so that's what class object method instance is. Um, and this is like something that you will continue encountering if you're playing around with OOP. It's general, OOP is there, and then several programming languages that use OOP. Java is one of them. Um, I know guys are using Java in the call. And so these are like things that are constant all through. So this, in terms of this also, when you talk about OP, one of the key things that you need to know with regards to object-oriented programming is that there are these four principles. And these four principles, if you can take a guess, I usually just have a word for it, an acronym, I call it IPAIR. And, and IPAIR, I just call it like inheritance, polymorphism, encapsulation, and abstraction. And, um, and, and, and what inheritance is, they, they're really, they look like really big words that if you drop somewhere, people will be like, what? Except they don't know. Um, but what an inheritance is, is think about an inheritance in terms of English. Uh, and and you easily remember that what inheritance is, is if someone leaves something to you. My dad had a plot of land and then he gave it to me. So see, I inherited it. That is my inheritance. So the beauty of object-oriented programming is that ability to reuse things. So you see, like my dad had a piece of land. So I don't need to go and buy another piece of land. I just come and inherit it. So I'm reusing it for you know, for something else or for that maybe planting of my funny agricultural experiments. And so it's a process of forming a new class from an existing class that is from that other one, that base class, you know. And so this inheritance bit is, is a very important concept because it helps that whole ability to reduce the amount of code size and also uh, that bit of us to reuse code. Um, and then we have polymorphism. And so with polymorphism, it's this ability, polymorph, um, morph is like form. And, and when you talk about morphing is taking into different forms. So morphism is the ability of something to change into different forms. And poly is now, when you use polymorphism, it means the ability of a thing. Let's use, I'm using a thing very loosely to take shapes of different formats. And so, if you now, let's say, uh, think about me, I told you I swim and I run. So imagine if I was, if I was one of the Marvel characters, you know, they reach out to me, they're like, yo, we love your color. You're gonna be the new, not Black Panther. That would be an insult. We call them what? Like Black Tamri or something. I have superpowers. What are my superpowers? I can morph. It depends on where I am. If I'm in the sea, I change into a fish. And then I come into land, and then I'm like walking, have two legs. If I'm in the sea, I have like fins, you know, and 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 like a tail, so it's like a tail, it's like a fin, those ones. Yeah, you know, if you eat fish or you've seen a fish, those things that you can flip around. And you can swim very fast, and that's my superpower. So it's the ability of me to like morph into different ones. And so if you look at each one, the terms of like programming and OOP for that matter, uh, polymorphism is that ability to use an operator or function in different ways. In other words, like you, you're giving different meanings of functions or operators or, you know, so you're giving like different meanings and, and you can use them over and over again. Um, so a single function or an operator functioning in many ways, you know, with that is what polymorphism is. Um, and then you have encapsulation. And this is, if you um, think about encapsulation, you, you, you're looking at the word capsulate. And to capsulate comes from uh, capsule. And what's a capsule? If you look at a capsule, it's 
it's usually like this thing that if you open inside, there are things inside. And so encapsulation is, it means that there are things inside and we've covered it with something. So when I say I am encapsulating something, I have just, you know, like covered something inside. And when I'm covering something inside, what it means is I'm placing data and functions that work. If, like if these things work in the same way, I put them there. And that's why, like, if you look at these pills that they give us that have like capsules, um, it's, it's like four milligrams. You're going to put it inside there, and that's like four milligrams. And that four milligrams is supposed to help you to do something inside your body. Um, people who go and exercise and whatever, they take capsules, that's what will happen. You don't take this number of things, because if you take it, it starts increasing it. So so, so, so since, since you're talking about like all this encapsulation and everything, it's good for you to sort of like you cover, you know, the data and functions that work within the data in the same place. And so you'll have a lot of like calibra calibraces or brackets all over, you know, and you have like uh, all these like brackets all over. And so you have to like cover, you put your data like inside there. Um, and we talk about abstraction. What, is, what does it mean like to abstract? Abstract comes from the word subtract. So subtract is to remove. So what you're doing when you say you're abstracting something, you're sort of like you're just hiding, you know? I'm telling you the essentials. I'm like, yo, you know what? Uh, I am a guy. And, and what else do you want to know? That's it, just leave it at that, I'm just a guy. What else do you want to know? I'm like a guy, I'm a black guy I'm from Kenya. That's it. I don't need to tell you where I'm from or my tribe, uh, but just know I'm a black person from Kenya, and that means I'm African, you know? And so what ab abstraction is, is, and when you talk about abstraction, most people are referring to this like data. You know, I'm only going to give essential information to the outside world, but I'm going to hide the background details. And, and I'm giving this example of like I'm an African or anything is, um, I've, I've, I've experimented with Tinder uh, for some time. Like, I wanted to find out, like, how their algorithm works of whatever reason you might think it is, because no one ever believes when I tell them that. So you'll find that if I'm using the API to, like, build something, and I'm like, yeah, okay, cool, this is Tinder. It has all this list of people who are in the dating app. Um, I don't need to give everything there. I can put my one photo and five photos, which sort of should tell who I am. But the rest of the things, I hide them, you know, uh, and I'm keeping it to myself. So with regards to like C++ and OOP for that matter, what it does is it, it provides these different methods for the outside world to give internal details about this person, these methods and, and, and data to people. So if you have data for like Frank Tamre, and Frank Tamre is this guy who, <clears throat> I know his email, his phone number, where he stays, what he likes, or blah, 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 all those things, where he swims, all those things. So if someone is like, wants to find out about me, uh, I'm probably not going to give them like where I stay. No, you know, like my email, you know, because why are you giving someone like where are you staying? This is my location, pinpoint and everything. No, that's weird. Um, try and think about it that way. So it's like what is needed is what I'll share with you, you know. And so that's what technically what these four key or key principles that are mostly used within the whole field of object-oriented programming languages are. So you use this when you're moving over towards Java, when you're moving over uh, even in C and, and even in this uh, C++. And so these this principles are really key for people to know. And this is what I'll spend a lot of time on. And this is what I've spent a lot of time on, to like explain and break it down. But don't worry, I'm not going to like spend the entire thing like taking you through the whole C++ curriculum. That is definitely something that is really, really wide. Um, and so I'll say that like in summary, um, that what C++ has is it has this, cool um, language features, you know, and that whole bit of the fact that it is object-oriented, that is like C++. Now we are focusing on C++ itself. It's, it's, it's object-oriented and, 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 and that means that the focus is on objects and manipulations around these objects. So information about how these manipulations work is abstracted from the consumer and the object. Um, it's not the only one that does this. I mean, Java does this also. Uh, the other bit is you have speed, and 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 I think you would be conversant with knowing that it's a preferred choice when you think about like all these things to do with like latency or compilation or um, execution of time, because you know they really execute faster than the others. I'm going to talk about like why speed, why C++ is so sort of like speedy um, than other general functioning programming languages. So the other thing is that there's this like very rich library support, and I think if you start writing like C++ code, I'm going to show you like an example down here is you have um, this STL, like this uh, standard template library. And so what the STL has, it has all these like, many functions that help to quickly write code. Uh, that's why I think you had one person saying like, oh, I found it to be really easy. Um, and that was say it's frustrating because they maybe did 
skip that bit maybe and say, oh yeah, it's STL, that's fine, cool, awesome, let's move on, you know? Um, but there are also other main challenges. It's not like, I'm just not saying that it's because of STL or anything, but that, those are like, could be one of them. So for instance, um, so you have like different standard libraries for different things. I'm going to give you like an example later on, on like how this um, looks like. Um, the other bit is you have pointer support. So C++ also supports like pointers, which are widely used in programming, and they're often not available in most like, not, not in like all programming languages have it. And then it's actually compiled. So code has to be first compiled into low level code, and then it is executed. And like other programming languages where they are interpreted, you know, and all those things, please don't get me into a debate on which one is better than this one. Like we are on C++, so that's the thing. So in uh, short, if you're someone who's starting out right now, I would actually tell you like, this is like advice I would tell you, like write a lot of C++ code. And this is like general for all, um, if you're learning to program, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a presentation I've given on um, 24 lessons I wish I knew on a style in programming and and probably maybe I don't know if they uploaded on YouTube I'm going to send them the link of, of that specific talk um, but like if you google it 24 lessons terms or you go to speaker deck and look for speaker deck terms 24 lessons you'll see it and one of the advice is this it's like write a lot of code build a lot of software read a lot of code and just solve a lot of algorithms and the more you do it it, it, when you start off, it's like you're going up a hill. I, I mean, sometimes I run, I run for very long distances. When you're going up an incline, it, it's really, really hard when you start off. Um, but at some point, you start getting used to it, and your body starts getting used to it, and, and you can like do it. And so, especially that bit of algorithms is one of the things that most people like skip, and they're like, yeah, no, that's not important. But like, they're really important because I'll talk about it like, later on, like how, wh why is it that this is one of the things that you need to be good at, or you need to like practice or maybe create a culture around doing it like every day um, for that matter. And also, I really emphasize, like write, write a lot of C++ code. So when you keep on writing a lot of it, it's, it's, it's going to be that. So I know we've done a lot of slides so far, guys are like, yo man, we have hardcore, and, you know, developers over here. So let me, let me look relevant, you know, like this is like an example of a very simple program that I was, I was playing around with um, some time back of, of like saying, um, it's like an algorithm and it's straightforward. They're like, yeah. So the question is like, oh, write, an, write a program that uses an if statement to check whether the number is equal or not, you know? And so that, that whole uh, namespace uh, standard library is that namespace using namespace standard. So you come and write it out. And, and, and it's easy for you to like play around with this. And so what I'm trying to use while I was giving this example, it's very relevant, is you could easily write it without that part where you say present an integer. But as you write it over and over, you come and write it and say, okay, fine. I, um, I think I can extend this and make it to be more human friendly. Like prompt it up, write this code, prompt it up on like a terminal. It easily tells you, hey, please enter an integer, and someone enters the integer, and then it refers back to them. And you're trying to like make yourself encouraged, and you can tell someone, hey, I can build uh, something that is more of an app of some sort, <laughs> or an AI <laughs> that tells you, I checked whether a number that is given to it is um, is odd or even. Uh, and so that's what that's like an example of some of the simple things you can start like doing. And, and this will like start give you this momentum. Um, I, I think on GitHub, I don't know whether I've pushed all the code there, but I think on GitHub I have like this repository that I created um, for like playing around with like all these very simple programs. I call them simple programs where it's like, oh, or even add these numbers and you're like building them. And, and you see what happens is you can easily use this knowledge of very simple apps that you've built to transfer it to bigger ones. Because what's a big app? Accumulation of very simple, you know, very small um, applications or very small computations. So what kind of apps? I used to hate this X management system, X management, but then I quickly realized like what, what this helps, like if you build like a school management system, you, you're looking at so many things, you know, you're looking at data, you're looking at how do I manage data, how do I manage sessions, how do I manage, you know, users uh, that I, I have uh, for, for that matter, um, how do I prompt people, how do I put permissions, how do I, like, you know, all these many things that are playing at the same time, looks very simple, it's a school management system, it's a hotel management system. But there are many things that are involved. So that's like one of the key things that I would say, like it's good for you to also like play around with it so that you know, hey, this is this is how this would play out. Um, and then once you're able to do like all these very, uh, I'll call it like small, it's good sort of like apps, you can now move on to like these advanced topics like multi-threading, networking, concurrency, lambda expressions, and garbage collections. There are many beginners, but these ones are like, you know, that, that complicated, once you get to that point. 
Um, and I, I avoid using the word easy. I'll say not complicated <laughs> for a specific reason. So, um, so that's what would summarize that bit of, of us talking about, hey, this is like the summary and how do we move towards this bit of like scale and all those things. So I would say when you're not transitioning is you have now to think about scale. And what does scale, when you talk about scale now, which is what we're gonna talk about right now, scale is a very um, common topic, especially in the present software development world and circles and startups, you know, and, and, and when you talk about scale, you start talking about scalable software. And, and what is scalable software for that matter is you have to start saying like, okay, fine. Scalable software, you have to start by thinking about software. And what is software? Software is something that people use, but then there's this quote that uh, Paul Graham, this uh, the founder or co-founders of, of, of um, Y Combinator say that software is eating the world. And so if it is eating the world, that means that you can't just eat the world with one very small thing. Uh, that means that your software has to be used by many people. You know, like, while these made of people, so then if they are eating it, you, my understanding for this was when you talk about scale and why I was using this was if you, you have to plan for that scale bit when you're starting off, you know, and what is scalability? If you look at, it's, it's a full scale block, uh, they define it as the attribute of a tool or a system to increase its capacity and functionalities based on users' demands. And so when you talk about scale, it's, um, if I give an example of my beautiful cup over here, if I start putting tea or porridge and it's coming, if I need more, I don't want to like finish then go, I want to stay there, I don't want it to fall over. I want to see if it will expand based on my usage. Maybe if I hold the cup, it's a smart mug, it easily knows, hey, this guy is hungry today, so it becomes big or, oh, this guy is small, he's doesn't, not that hungry and so it shrinks, you know. Um, I would use it like a very funny abstract example. So it has to like increase that whole bit and functionality in terms of like, oh yeah, so now we've made a smart mug. If it is hot, it cools things down or you can't get burnt by the side. Um, the other bit is it's based on who the user's demands because at the end of it, all that software is going to be put in front of users. Um, and so when you talk about, again, scalability, one of the things is you do not want to be saying you want to scale if you're not adapting to like these demands. So it has to remain stable. Yes, you're adapting to these demands, but it has to remain stable. So imagine if all of a sudden my cup that is awesome and like this, uh, when I start adding hot tea, all of a sudden it starts dripping, you know? So it's burning or it's creating a mess around my desk. Um, or as it grows bigger, it just grows so big I can't even hold it, it becomes too heavy. And so we have to like, think of what were the initial demands that these users had. And yes, we are adapting to these new demands. It has to still remain stable. It has to still function. And so in as much as we are, we are making changes to our software, we're making upgrades to our software, we're making overhauls, you know, and, and we're reducing features and we're increasing others and, you know, like resources that are sending into it, we're reducing them, we're increasing. They still, it, is, it still has to remain stable. And, and the reason why it has to remain stable is because, you know what, 60% of users will not give you up a second chance if they had a bad experience. And this is the like research that was done by Google. This is not me saying it. Um, and, and they will not, like, they look at the game. And even you yourself, you can ask yourself that question. You, you ever tried using an app, and then it didn't work, and you're like, really? OK, fine. Go back to the place to choose another one. Um, and even in terms of software, you're looking at a financial application. It, it reaches a certain point. And it really can't stretch. These people do not want to expand it or anything like that. Or it's buggy drop, next, drop, next, like that. And that's what, that's, that's, that's uh, it's called the unfortunate hash word while that developers are playing at. And um, on top of that, this 61% of users that will not give you up a second chance, guess what? 40% will go straight to a competitor's product instead. Like they don't even waste time. Um, and so, and that's why you really, really, really have to, you know, let the software remain stable as you're adapting to these changes. Now, however, you're a developer, you're a beginner, or, or, or in most cases, if you're an express developer, you will definitely agree with this statement that, you see, these decisions, they come high up the tax bracket. And by tax bracket, I mean, it's not the, the developer that's going to make the decision on whether we are, we are going to scale. No, it's probably going to come from like the CTO and the CEO, that, you know, that, that board of seats. 
you know, see, if, see, see this, see that, see that. Those C's are the ones who are going to sit down and discuss about it. If you're cold, you're probably like a senior engineer or something. But if it's your first day of work or you're not even really that much code in that company, highly likely you'll not be involved in scalability decisions. And so you're not going to be writing this scalable or making these decisions. You will uh, be doing it way later on, probably in your career or something like that. And so it's a, just a good uh, thing to know um that also you know as much as you're doing it you have to like think about your growth in mind as you're writing your code as a developer and everything so there and when this the c's sit together in a very retreated boardroom what they usually put some factors into it and it's like now on the comp company is sort of like a part where they talk about data you know and and databases like you know what this is now you know, when it comes to as as that from that bit of of, of them asking that person, you know, you know, what, what kind of database can we use? Is the data enough for us to scale? You can't be having like four users and you're thinking about scaling. Four, I mean B2C, not mean like businesses, you know, could be four, but your clients are like Google and Microsoft. So, you know, that is another ball game altogether. Uh, but I mean like four, you're doing a B2C sort of like app and, and someone is using that software. So it's, it's, it's like very hard for you to think about it. So, and the reason why I talk about like this data in databases is because if you make a mistake and so um, you're making this up and, and the data or the databases is a problem and you didn't choose it very well, uh, you want to move. So as you're migrating people, we've deleted a bit of it. So if I, am, uh, if I was having this chats, let's say, and then there was an upgrade, let's say, to WhatsApp, all of a sudden, I wake up tomorrow, the interesting conversation I was having with someone who I really loved, they've all disappeared. And her contacts have disappeared because there was an update to my phone. Really? Like, why, why did that have to happen, you know? Um, and the other bit is like functionality, you know? So you have to also think about, okay, cool, we have, we have, we want to really lay out that like, these are the foundations of these are our apps and everything like that. How do we, you know, like, how do we, what are the functions that you want to integrate into a product? You know, is it that we integrate one function and then everything like falls down or what's going to happen to, to, to all of it? And then also you have to think about the team. Yeah, can people be able to deliver it or not? And you, know, you have to think about it. And so as you think about the team also and functionality and the data you have, uh, finances come into play. You're not going to scale if you don't have money. Uh, you need money to buy extra things. You know, you need extra processing power, extra this, extra that. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, it's, it's usually like a, this is very huge undertaking. That you have to like think about the money part and all those things. And this is like the softer part of, of scaling. I say this is what is discussed on the seaside. Um, and then there's the code quality. Now, this is where now someone comes and says, okay, fine. Um, do we have this like is it high quality code inputs? You know, uh, how are they? How do they look like? Is it is it easy for us to easily scale right now? Or like when we are scaling, we have to shut down everything. Imagine if WhatsApp, when they're doing an update, you don't have access to WhatsApp um, for this period of time. Uh, maybe, I don't know, one day, two days, you don't have access to it. Um, think about how chaotic that can be. Uh, and so that's where you'll find, like, let's say, companies would either send out a memo and tell you from this time to this time, you know, be available, blah, 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 be ready. Um, but, like, think about how is it written? Is it, if it's well written code, it's easy for you to implement, you know, future changes. And, and a new programmer who comes into the team, they don't have to, like, sit down and wonder, like, what the hell is happening here? Yeah. Um, and so this, this is, like, some of the things that we, like, think about. Um, but then one of the key things that you need really to avoid is everything to do with performance bottlenecks. So you want to avoid performance bottlenecks, like the example I've given, like if, if all of a sudden you've now upgraded my, uh, my, my, my data or something like that, but then as you did your upgrades, all of a sudden everything is confused, you know? Uh, I, had, I had this amount of money in this app that you gave me, all of a sudden I don't have that money. You know, someone else had five bob, now they've grown all of a sudden, they're five meters. You know? And so these are like very small uh, things that you really need to think about. And then the other bit is like, all of a sudden, when I start using your software, it hangs on me, or it takes a while for it to process something that maybe previously it was taking a very short time to do it. Now, that is from the C perspective, C, some things that we we'll talk about those things. Now, from a developer perspective, um, you have to think about like, what, what's the kind of algorithm that you going to choose? Um, and so, uh, and at this part, there's, there's, there's usually, every time you write a piece of code or an algorithm, you have to ask yourself, like, what's the, What's the, the word is bigger notation, you know? Um, what's the efficiency of the code that I've written? And then and, and you can be asked this question sometimes when you're solving interviews and you've written this algorithm, you finish it, okay, fine. Uh, what's the, 
efficiency of it and you say oh it's o raised to power this or this raised to power that you know and so you really have to know like you know like uh, and like how do you reduce that that is there uh, and if you know that whole time and space complexity how much time is it taking to execute and how much space is your algorithm taking to execute because once you start having all these five ten algorithms that are occupying a lot of space all of a sudden someone starts using your uh, software uh, and if it's a desktop it's full you know like the comp is full like tells you it can't process now a lot of memory usage and blah 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 things like that um you know and what was the choice of algorithms you're going to use you know are you are you going to go with maybe linear search or binary search you know and, and then like all these things and, and so the more, the more you think about it it's, it's 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 something that you really need to think about so you, you you play around with that to start to understand like what's what's happening in that and then the other bit is memory management um so you you, when, when you're doing like scalable software, uh, there's this thing called garbage. And so garbage happens when, you're, when your software is running, you know? And so you, you should be able to sort of like say, okay, fine, how am I managing the memory that I have, you know, uh, within my application? So know this, that w when you're writing it, you have to think about like, okay, fine, I, I, have, um, I, have, I, have, I have to collect this garbage. But then again, remember, if you think about like the real world itself, when you have to go around collecting it, it starts taking a toll on the way your software is actually performing. And so you have to also think about, okay, fine, how am I handling garbage collection? Am I handling it or not? If you wonder what garbage collection is, think about it this way. For every time that we are outside, if you go to our city, for instance, or your cities that you're in, um, there's, they're walking around, there's usually trash. If they don't collect it for some time and it's outside your house, it, it literally can turn into a dump site, you know, and everyone can come and start throwing everything there. And you can find all manner of things in a dump site. And so software more or less would be the same. And so start thinking about how am I managing my memories that, you know, what's the amount of garbage that is out here? And am I actually collecting it or not? It's like accumulating and accumulating and everything like that. Um, Libraries are also important. Um, I, I usually have these conversations with some, you know, like every time the, the old people, white hair people like myself, we, we get into these talks with also our young guys and we have fun with them and they're like, yo, you know, there's this new feature that has come out and what do you do? Do you go and start like adopting it immediately or do you think about performance first? Um, and I'll tell you most people are always like, yo, yeah, let's jump on this, let's jump on that, but make this critical decisions because sometimes the library you choose can either bring down your whole application or your whole business, or it can boost it up, it can make it like, perform faster or make it perform slower. Um, then also like content delivery networks, do you prefer to store files locally or do you want to call them from outside, you know, like this central location where you can easily call them and, 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 and they come and can, you can use those applications. Um, and, and learning how to start using CDS is really good. And, and, and I'll put this as basic as even if you're doing HTML and CSS, it's good for you to have your CSS file locally and download Bootstrap and have it locally. But as you grow, it's good for you to have, you say, okay, fine, yeah, Bootstrap has a CDN, net, CDN link, I can call that here and use, and then you start, you know, playing around with that as, as it starts. Because what happens when that is deleted, that CSS file went missing, it was deleted, what happens? They're running your local file, um, you know? So it's easy for you to easily call all of these ones um, on, on the networks. And then also it's good for you to know um, asynchronous programming. Uh, and this is, if you go to the world of Android, you probably call this as coroutines or the world of coroutines or that, for that matter. And, and knowing it is, is really good for, because once you know how to do this asynchronous processing, you start knowing how can I write asynchronous code? How can I use queues? Um, you know, and, and, and this is like a, a good example of if you have 20 people who are asking for a specific resource, you know, how do you get them access to it if it's like one door? Uh, for that matter, how do they queue in? What's, what's your philosophy towards that? Um, these are usually like at some point you start writing code after some time is when you start thinking about such kind of things. But it's good for you to have like this knowledge as you're going on or if you're writing code already, like it's good for you to know it. Um, and so how do you use C++ to scale? I, I mentioned that that there are different ways in which you can do it. So the, the different ways you can use it for, for, for scale for that matter in terms of C++ is that you can write it natively. I mean, you C++ is, you can write it for yeah, different um, platforms for that matter. Um, and so you can write native code and say, okay, fine, I'm gonna write all my code in C++. Uh, might be painful, <laughs> especially at some other fronts, uh, but that's one way of doing it. I mean, people are doing it, you know? 
Um, and the other bit you can do it is you can add a bridge and to your native application. I'm going to show you like an example of that. Uh, how do you add like a bridge to your code and then how do you add like this bridge just to, 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 to like the code that's there. And then when you're using it for scale for that matter, it's, it's, it's good for you to know that what C++ does, it gives you, it gives programmers this very high level of control over two things, system resources and the memory. And, and it's important for you to know it, you're like, okay, fine, cool. Um, I have access to this and programmers can actually get in and edit or, or, or like write how they want, you know, how much memory the apps are taking, is it a lot, is it really clear, you know, and, and you really start to interact with this if you, if you become, um, uh, the, the role that I used to hold was, was, was more or less like a UX dev. And so you take an app, you look at it, you do like analysis and then you reduce, you check, okay, these are the bottlenecks that they're having in this app. And I can reduce this by writing this C++ library or using this C++ library and interface it with it. And so the, the reason why you can use um, C++ for scale for that matter is because primarily because of two reasons. And, and there's so many others. Um, one is a speed. Um, and, and, and I know people can say, yeah, there's this other one and this other one and this other one and, and this other one. So, the, when, I, when we talk about speed, you know, we, we are looking at uh, a very uh, interesting bit in terms of like the advantages that it has um, uh, in terms of like people choosing it uh, is that the truth is there's no clear one because what someone can do in one programming language, they can also do it, what I can do in C++, I'll, I'll meet a, a very expert Java person who will come and tell me like, yeah, but I can do that also in, in, in Java. Um, but the thing is, the trick that, that what C++ does is there's this, um, it, it's very potent, you know, it's this thing called pointers, you know, and, and, and pointer arithmetic, you know, when you combine it with the relative comfort of object orientation, it makes it like really, really interesting in that I can really specify the things that I want to do to these objects, you know. And so how you achieve speed is that it's, it's going to be faster because it provides this very excellent concurrency support. And it makes it useful in areas where performance is quite critical, you know, and, and latency is very low. Um, so such requirements occur over time. So you know you have like like a server and it has all these like high loads and all those things. So web servers, application servers, name it what all kinds of servers. So it 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 does all this very huge role in it. And then one other bit is that you have to look at like the value semantics that it has. Uh, and that is like that the things that are like logically connected, you know, so like this one connects to this one, you know, it can be, it can be, they, they, they can be really physically close to the memory. Um, and so uh, an example is, is like, let's say you have an array of, of, of defined, uh, of, of user defined types, you know, so all, of, all elements of that array, you occupy a single block of memory. So that matches the way, let's say, hardware treats memory. So with all the caching and prefetching, which results in like fast execution, uh, in point of handle semantics based languages like Java, C Sharp, you know, C sharp is like some exceptions, you know, uh, Python for that matter. Um, so you easily have like an array of this user defined type is scattered all over the place. And so that is what is true for any user defined type. So in C, all nine pointer or non reference members of the structure are close to each other. So when you access one, there's a big chance of another one is in cache too. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm apologetic for <laughs> the beginners if, if I'm really losing you right now. Hold on. Um, I think they say they're recording this, and, and it's good for you like to hear it first time, so that even as you watch it later, you'd be like, "Yeah, I don't mind saying that part." Um, so yeah, and and, and that bit is also like in terms of speed, you have inline templates, optimizing compilers that can be implemented, and then you you're given in any language, so garbage collectors can be made fast nowadays. So it's not only like like the, the different the several programming languages that have like garbage collectors. It's not only like that it's just unique to C++. Um, they've been made um, faster. Uh, but you see, the bit is like that value semantic that I was talking about is it's, it's lays like the more fundamental level of language design, you know, and, and it cannot be added easily afterwards. It's, it's either there, it's not there. Um, I'm not going to compare this with like T sharp or anything like that. But the thing is, within C++, you can choose to have pointer based semantics, you know, um, and, and by using the pointers and references, you cannot do, you know, uh, other way around those languages that do not have it. So,
platforms, excellent libraries, name it. I'm gonna give you an example of one library after this, uh, just the next slide, yeah? And I'm gonna talk about it. Uh, apologies, I think I skipped to, yes, there. So, and that's, that's the bit. So you have uh, that bit. And, and in terms of like being closer to hardware, it's, uh, it's closer than most other programming languages. Like, you know, you have your Pythons, your, your JavaScript or something. You, it's, it's really like closer to the hardware. And that's where the software is closely coupled with hardware and your level support is, is required for, for, for software level. That's why like, you're now talking about like, this is where now if you're talking about scale, uh, when we have it closer here, it's easy for us to optimize and tell the hardware to do these things very faster than they really tell it to do um, uh, uh, any other thing. Uh, and then there's also that ability for, I mentioned like pointers earlier. So that low level support is required. So, so in general purpose programming languages with a bias towards system programming, it, it provides really like very ready access to hardware, you know, and level resources, efficient compilation, versatile approach, like very many things, you know, abstractions and stuff like that. And then there's this ability to use pointers from C when needed to go deeper. So I want to read the system level resources. It's easy for me to access it with C. Um, while at the same time, they have the, this very nice, powerful API or libraries such as STL, that is C++ for that matter, uh, that you can use to build fast without having to code everything from scratch. And when I say you don't have to code everything from scratch, um, there's a very, very nice library that you can use if you want to do like, scalability. It's called Boost. If you search for like Boost, uh, the site is boost.org. Um, and there's so many libraries there, you know, like, and, and you can even add others and they keep on adding others and they're really updated. And, and it's like this, um, I think it's one of the ones, and, and maybe there's someone in the call knows others that probably are more inclined to, or that the C++ um, community uses. And you could like, you know, like please share <laughs> with us. But I know like Boost has so many of them. I mean, you have a line, memory alignment functions, allocators, traits, etc. You have accumulators, you have, you know, I know that accumulators do these are types of like libraries in it, yeah. And so they have like framework for incremental calculation, you know, and so, and statistical accumulators. So if you're using this in terms of like you're doing your MS or AI, you can use it there. And then you have, you actually have a library called algorithms and you have this, a collection of very useful generic algorithms. So you don't have to write like most of these algorithms from scratch. You can easily like call this um, library to use it. Um, and so there's also one called data structures, you know, there's so many. Uh, so I can't go through the list all of it. Just go to boost.org and you can check it out there. They are not sponsoring this talk and this video, unfortunately, but yeah. Uh, so in summary, and I know like this looks like a very boring one and I'm not going to like give a total summary of it. Um, the, the thing is like CPU bottlenecks, you can relieve them through C or C++. And, 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 and we can go in through so many applications, but I'm gonna give you like a use case right now so that I don't like bore you um, with it. I think I'm going to bore you with my example. So let me give you like, um, I'm, I'm actually now in the last like phase, you know, if you remember my agenda. Uh, so, 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 so technically, um, if you, if you, if I, I, I am a mobile developer, I'm an, I'm an Android native, Flutter also, I'm playing around with it. So if you, if I have to make an app, um, and let me give you this example, and this is where I told you, oh, please engage with me. I know you've been waiting for the time to engage with me. This is going to happen right now. How many of you seen? And, and if you've seen, um, as I was preparing this presentation, you know, I teach kids, I told you I teach kids. And so one of the kids asked me, Frank, why would anyone want to listen to their own voice? Uh, and, and I was like, but, but, but we all have songs in us, you know, and, and we all sing, you know. And they're like, no, not necessarily. So I told them, if you really want to sing, let me give you like a very easy example. Just have cold shower, could be from the top, or even a basin. I'm telling you music will come out, music. And even, even those guys, I'm just giving you like, this is the truth. Like if you have these guys who are really talking in like bass, like you, what's up? When they start singing, they get into the shower, there's cold water, oh my God, the soprano. Oh my God, ah, ah. That, that's, that's what happens and, and you know, so, 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 so the question is, that's the idea of an app that I have, you know? So, what if you could actually sing and record it, you know, like, so you have a and, and you have to go to the studio. So you have to, if you have to record yourself, you have to go to the studio, you know, to pay money, uh, sessions, get some demo, look for a new producers, you know, or you publish on YouTube, then you start telling people, yo, listen to my song, give out mixes, but no one has the desire outside to go and um, 
the other bit, maybe you might be asking me, Frank, why would I really want to go and record myself? Okay, fine. Let me give you a very nice example. You can record this for the person that you love. Online and tell them the way you love them, blah, blah, blah. I am not going to sing a love song in this presentation. But I'm just putting it for the sake of it. You can go and sing and, and you sing to people. And, and, and uh, what, instead of going to like to the studio, paying money, booking sessions and all those things, what if you had a portable recording studio? In your hands, move everywhere, or comp, whatever. Comp and like, record yourself, and ah, there it is. So he, here's my question, and, and this is this is a question I want you to think about. Um, that what, what features would you need for a recording studio? This is where now you engage with me. Um, think think of this it's like an app. It could be software on, on desktop or, or on your phone, and it's an app that enables someone to sing and produce songs from their phones. Just that. again. Go to slider.com, or if you had it open, you can just like, if you have it open right now, the question has definitely popped up. Uh, if you refresh it, or it will automatically refresh, you know, and it will ask you, what features would you need for a recording studio? Give me any words. I've been talking for some time. I can have my water break, as you guys now like tell, you know. Uh, engage, come on, tell me. We created the rule. We are still here till now. Um, uh, in fact, people have increased. Which is even great. The guys who are not there, the rule was, by the way, when you're in the call, uh, you have to engage. Not part for typing the lyrics I'm supposed to sing. Fantastic. By the way, I hope no one will come to me if I make this up and tell me, yo, he stole my idea. No, relax, man. You know? uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But just like put it out there. We're just like talking for the sake of talking. You know, like we, we're like thinking about it's this app, and, and, and you're probably asking like, where would someone use it? I'll give you an example. Um, I have this person that I'm in love with, and I always want to make them songs. You know, like nowadays you can send like voice notes. You know, I'm, I'm telling you when I was growing up. Yeah, I'm that old. We would uh, sort of like joke and say, uh, yeah, one day you'll be able to like call the other person, and you'd see them, and they're like. That, that's not going to happen. That, that's possible. Yeah, right. You know, and now we're here. So, yeah, there's, oh, yeah, Harun. <laughs> Someone has called you out. Uh, so I said, you get to meet yourself. Um, I, officially, I can't do it. Uh, the person who's commented, um, I think it's the same person because I'm seeing it's one person who's actually commented. Yeah, so he's, he's mic this. <laughs> yeah, so, so please tell me. So, what features? Yeah, t tell me the features. Yeah, selecting the beats. That's, that's actually very interesting. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay, obviously, like some background noise from Harun's mic is not a feature of our app. So I'm just like letting everyone know this is someone who's really shouting and they're like, yo, I need attention. And they, they literally put it there, noted very well. We have taken that in. And so you have a notepad for typing the lyrics and then one for selecting beats. So I can be walking, I can be doing this, and lyrics come to my mind, I write them down, or I can be having a feature of selecting the beats, pop up, up and I put it there. Uh -huh. Yes, ability to auto tune like T Pain. Like that, that I think I've had one of the songs. Like the, the one where you like, if my voice sounds like this, I can say like uh, 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 something like that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the thing. Uh -huh. Another example. Yeah, keep, keep them coming, keep them coming. Yeah, keep them coming. Hello guys, so we are looking for, you join us reader.com, hashtag, you go to write number 4991, then you respond to the question. Yeah, yeah, that's very true, sorry, yeah. Yeah, be sure to make a tip in, so yeah, like, oh, like that. Merge two, two or more recordings, I can record one time, merge it later. Um, high quality audio, losslessness. According, yeah, encoding of audio to bytes. Uh, very, very interesting. I probably should take numbers of everyone here or their emails, and then we have a brainstorming session. 
yeah, passing the audio through filters. I'm, I'm glad people are understanding some of these words, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can change your voice, you know, you can change it from maybe, you know, like you're, you're singing like a very, uh, maybe strange one, you can add it like and modify it or something like that. You can, yeah, you can stream the recording real time to Google Drive or Facebook Live. That's that's actually a very interesting feature. So you can be there on my phone and I can be singing real time to her, um, Facebook Live, and tell people the way, yo, this is me, man. I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm there. I'm like in, in, in that whole, whole, whole bit, yeah. Option to delete. Very interesting point, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also passing them through filters, you know, select beats, boom, twaf, boom, twaf, add them there. Um, yeah, so just go to slider.com, hashtag is there if you want to contribute, uh, just a few more seconds. And so, ah, good, interesting. Use machine learning to censor curse words in real time. <laughs> Well, it's still, like that would be a really interesting one. Um, so someone is singing and they, you know, the way like someone starts to sing and 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 they forget the lyrics, or they maybe they throw an, a curse word inside, or maybe they actually use curse words there. And so like it should be able to know, like it can go in and, and, and like tweak it and remove that uh, from there. Very interesting points, by the way. I'm, I'm loving these ideas. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, you can connect to Bluetooth or network. Very good, interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, just slider.com hashtag 4991. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh so far. Uh you can change your voice, you can connect through Bluetooth the network, you can use machine learning to sense the passwords and, and all of this. Um I'm not doing research for any app. I am not going to take this idea and use it anywhere. I'm just like putting it out there. So don't think that's a very brilliant idea. I'm going to use it. Um that bad ability to auto tune, pass input through the filter, select beats, stream the recording session to social media, use machine learning to sensor castles in real time, connect through Bluetooth or network. And uh, yeah, there's losslessness, encoding of audio to bytes. That's, that's very interesting, you know, high quality audio. That's very, very interesting. Not bad for typing the lyrics. Um, monitor how fast or slow should be the flow of your words. It's not like it tells you you're imagining. Um, use the words here, use the words there. And I can tell you, yeah. Uh -huh. Interesting. I like this bit here, Paula saying you can add different forms of recording. Beats, you can select them, two types of recordings and the like. Um, so, so let's say no one is typing again, right? Um, I'm guessing no one is typing. Monitor how fast the flow of your words can attribute to the Okay, cool. So let's, let's look at that here. Um, and and let's say uh, so if I move next, you know the the the, the poll will end. So, <laughs> so let's next up it now. So let me stop it like ten seconds. Yeah, don't don't type anything after ten seconds. Um, just in case there's someone finishing, um, you can type the word and put like three dots that you know like you're actually typing. So uh, so 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 say yeah, you can change your voice, monitor, all of this. So if we have. If we have, let's say, an app with these features, right? There's not like so many things that you can start a startup with an app like this, you know, like it's this is crazy. It's it's, it's how crazy this is. Um that something was added. So that's one, two, yes, social media. Yeah, an app that doesn't have to drain the battery. Very interesting because then if you're saying you're gonna it's gonna be portable and, and from their phones, so it shouldn't be draining the battery. It's not like when I switch it on and I'm using it, my phone moves from a smartphone to a for the people who don't understand Kiswahili, I'm going to use the Kiswahili word and then I'll translate. That's like a feature phone. Uh, and so it should not be like something like that. It shouldn't like drain my app or anything like that. So then how would I um, so like go, 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 go and uh, start to make this? So remember, it's just a simple app. We, we start with and we had all these many ideas and we can probably summarize them into like, yeah, we have pre-recorded beats, you know, and some loops that you can use there inside beats are like, you know, and then you have loops, you know, like things like you you know, you start like this repeated, maybe like a keys or something. And then you have pre-recorded sounds like ad libs. And a good example of this one, a very good example of an ad lib would probably be or sounds would be like um all of us are conversant with this skin and artist called Reckless. There's this simple ad lib that you would use called the yes banner, and all of a sudden it's a song, you know. <laughs> this like conversation, like who stole what, what, where, why, and all those things. Um um 
again, he's not sponsoring this talk. I'm not his producer or in any way affiliated with him. I'm just like saying that's like a good example. I'm trying to use like local examples, you know. I'm not going to use like foreign ones. This is local ones. So we've had that, that song, Yes Banner. And that word, Yes Banner, it, like, it's a pre-recorded sound. He gives you the rights. You have that word there so you can be doing your song. Maybe you tell her the way, oh, you know, I love you so much. And then there's that word, Yes Banner. Oh, from the first time I met you, yes, Bana, or whatever. And it could be like a very nice thing. And then you can have like an effects, you know, yeah, like effects, uh, all this load of like effects things that you can load and then um, changing of the volume of the tunes of these people and, and, and whatnot. So you have, you have all of these, these are the features. We've sat down, we're all developers, 26, 27 of us, we're like, yo, we're gonna change the world. This is how we exit the rat race, you know, done hustling, million users tomorrow. Let's make the app. Bam, bam, bam. Put together an app there. Remember, just a simple app. Then, for some reason, for some reason, it hits. It actually, we actually get. We share with our friends and then they're sharing and then they're sharing, you know. It's called those stories that we love to tell ourselves in here. And the next thing you know, Yo, we slept, we woke up the next day, something like a movie. One million downloads, Play Store application. We're like, oh my God, what should we do? So now we are no longer thinking about, oh, this is just a simple app. No, now we have to scale it up because everyone is asking for everything. And then the app keeps on dragging and everything like that. But remember, we started from app features, pre-recorded beats, all those things. Now, here's the thing about scalability. You have to make a trade-off. So we go and sit down and we ask ourselves, hmm, if we have to make a trade-off, we have to focus on a feature so that it can make us really, really amazing. And so what feature can we focus on? Uh, these features. So we start to think. Pre-recorded beats, well, no, you know, time to loops. You can easily get this, people can easily download this somewhere and pay $5, $10, $15, and they have a hit song and you use it. Same to loops, you can download this, they're free, they're around, you can easily use them. Uh, yeah, audio recorder, yeah, you know, they are ready. When our phones can record volumes and audio, send someone, can record all those. Um, but one of the things that we've kept on talking about here is a synthesizer for any input that you're giving it. Like, is it like beats, drums, and all those things. So how do you create something that you do like an FX synthesizer? Uh, again, I'm using this like a use case. I've called it a use case. You could go anywhere. You could say, no, you know, but you know, these recorded loops, they're not nice. We'll have our own blah, blah, blah. But they're really there. We can use them. Um, I'd really like to take you to one video. I, I, I fell in love with this, like this whole concept of it from, from one thing, apart from the fact that I have like one sample of this. Um, check out a song called Sorry Not Sorry, the making of it. Just search for that on YouTube. I have given that um, producer who was making it. Uh, but like search for it. It's, uh, this, uh, Sorry Not Sorry, but I forget the part of sang it. Very interesting thing on how they make songs. And, and you look at the way he tells you, oh, I got this free thing from here. This is open source. This is this, this is that. And he puts together a song that's a hit song. And it's crazy when he's telling you the story of how they made it with a very famous artist. Obviously, it's not Kenya. Uh, so, or African. Uh, so, you have this. We learn on an FX synthesizer. So, we tell us by the way, you know what? If you can synthesize uh, this um, effects, we do really, really good. And so, we say, okay, fine, let's make an effects processor. So, what an effect is, people who don't know. It's like, let's say if you have, you know, like the way we say sound, like the way someone say, like, tipping thing. So, if I, this is how I'm talking, if you pass like an effect or you process my, my sound on, on it, it will probably come out as, yo, something like that. Like, I don't know how to come, like, something like that. You, you get what I mean. Like, I'll be talking as if, yeah, that's how I'll be talking. Like, it's that, this is exactly how I'll be talking. If you pass my sound in an effects processor that has like a choking, maybe something like that, or maybe. That, that could be like one of them. So that's like an effects process. I'm just giving an example. Please do not pause this, cut, share around. I do not want to be a meme anywhere, in, especially in this age nowadays. So that's the thing. And so you have this effect. So you, you can you can modify sound, music, instrument, or other audio. So through what you do signal processing. And so when you look at an effects processor, uh, there's actually a good sample for this by this Google guys. And, and so let me switch from here and uh, probably stop 
presenting and share the screen over here. And so, uh, there you go. I'll share my entire screen in a bit. Um, so there you go. Cool, done, entire screen is sharing. Trust you me. And I'm sharing and there, I think I'm sharing now. Yes, I am sharing in three, two, one. I am sharing, good, awesome. So I have, uh, this is the app itself, so I'll just like demo it the way it looks like. So you have, you have this, you have a portable studio and in this portable studio, I have uh, different effects, this uh, uh, the synthesizer that I can pass through here. Uh, I can put a gain to my music, to my input, uh i can i can put a delay so as as i talk there's like this very slow delay and, and so sorry i'm using this a very heavy musical words but if you like trust me if you search for it to find it and the link for this is actually it's a google sample um called android fx lab and you can use it and you can modify this add libraries remove it and, and all those things and so you have all these effects here so you have gain delay all those things so if you now really think about scaling now Normally, if you're doing like an Android code, you do it in Java or something, and you'd have something that looks uh, more or less like this. And so you'd have, oh yeah, there maybe we have recordings, press here, other recording, people talk, that, that it's done, you know? Um, but then now we're thinking it's an FX one. And so we have FXs, but we need to have, we need to tap into the library of already existing FX samples that are, that are literally um, popular. Um, yeah, awesome, awesome. I've seen Hannah has posted the link. So if you click on that link, that's the thing. And so for you to build it, it's, it's like a very, it takes some time, but you, you'll follow along. And so for me to explain to you, let me, let me show you what happened. There are like two key things that are important for you to know. You'd have your effects. And so your effects here, normally you'd have them, most of the apps you drive, like, like doing like Android and, and, and Java stuff, Core Java and, and, and like Android, you'd have them like, it's an app that just like everything is here, right? But then we are thinking about when you're doing it within, within, um, within, uh, when terms like scaling and mobile, remember I mentioned that the best way to do this, you could either write the whole mobile application in C++, and it's actually possible. Don't say it's not possible. There are solutions from a company, I think it's called Embracado, something like that. Um, and even you can do it even with uh, Visual Studio, VS Code. Um, the big one. Up with a smaller uh, Visual Studio, yes, that one, Visual Studio. <laughs> yeah, so you can, you can use it there. You, but the thing is, the, the amount of trouble you'd run into it, like connecting this, connecting that. Why not? If I already have my libraries in C, why not just like take all these libraries that are going to give me these effects and just create a way of talking of my Kotlin code or Java code to my C libraries? And so you have your C libraries, and that is, you'd have. Um, your your java code here and your c plus plus code here but then you need you need that interface and as i said earlier and for you when you're like scaling and all those things you don't want to run into performance bottlenecks you'll be telling yourself hey i want to use c plus plus code and so i have these libraries and this set of libraries they are in c plus plus and so they're here um i don't know if anyone can if you uh yes and so you have here you have like all these libraries and so i have my effects here in this folder um uh, I'll try and use a uh, magnifier. The beauty of Windows, you can judge me only one. I still love Windows. <laughs> um, it's not a conversation like the OS is. Okay, so so if you can see it, yeah. So you have my C, my effects are here. All of them are like here. So you have my my um my effects are here. So you have our and if you're doubting these effects, you can have your vibrato, your tremolo, your slap back, and everything like that. And so if I give an example of like a delay line um or or even others here so you, you have all of these ones a slap back and and different details of that exist. so you can have this effect and so this effect is is there uh it does all of that and it just takes the sample and multiplies it by 1000 you know um another cool one that you could probably use and so they, they all of them exist here and so what you need to do if you're playing around with audio it's important for you to know um, that there's this thing called duplex. So it's like a duplex engine helps with input and output. So you, you certainly can play that all the time. So you have your phone, you're taking audio, and then you can really like um, send that out. And so as you're playing around with this, you're like, okay, fine, cool. I have my 
my my library is here. I don't need to like worry about anything. So I have my my, my duplex engines are here. So I take input and then send it out. So I'm like I'm sending them out, I'm sending them out. And so I'm I'm changing and I'm playing around with like this is the input that's coming in. This is what I'm sending out there. And, and, and look that way. You can spend more time and look at this code there. It's it's not if it is complex, please hit me up. I'll definitely like get back to you um, and help you out on on, on those. So once you have it that way, um, the UI you can do it anything. And by the way, as I'm mentioning this, the people who do Flutter here don't get bored. We actually have a Flutter. Um, uh, you have a you have a Flutter um, extension or library that you can use for this. And so a package, sorry. And so if you go to that and you search for like um, uh, Obo. Uh, you could easily extend all functions of like the audio library with this. Uh, and so you have your duplex engine here, uh, and so you call it, and so you have your C++. And then um, the thing is, you have this whole native library that exists here, and so you have to make a call. So when you make the call, it interfaces, as you see up here, with this Java native interface that exists at the top. And so you're calling these two things um, at the same time. And so I don't need to write my um, I don't need to write like all these effects that will really start to take an impact. Um, all these effects, like, oh, this is the list of effects. And again, you see, I create a tuple and then I have all my effects. You get. And so, the most important thing for someone to remember is, in as much as I have my effects and everything like that, it's easy for me to say, okay, cool, I'm taking my inputs, I'm multiplying that, multiplying it by this time. I can change it, I can make the modifications in C. But then, I have my libraries in C++, I don't need to change them. If I have extra ones, I can just come in and add them in the C++ module. And then once I add them here, the only thing I'm doing inside my Kotlin application, and, and sorry, I know the guys will be really annoyed at me for like, why are you not using Jetpack? Relax, just take it easy, hold on. Yes, we are still on XML. Um, and so you'd have, you'd have like your XML, you do the design out there and, and, and like you, you, you play it out there, but then, Look at the size of our code. That those are the files that we have, and you can even make it even smaller uh, about it. And so you have your main activity. You ask for permissions, and I run this for the first time. It asks you for permissions, you know, because you have to like play audio through the like the application. And then once you do that, it's easy for someone to say, okay, fine, cool, that's it. And so what you've reduced is instead of someone using your app, and one of the things you're saying you need to avoid is your app doesn't start heating up or your app doesn't start having like all this lag performances and someone is using it. Um, and this is like the application itself. This is like the the, the internet like running. Uh, Portable studio and stuff, you can change it and run it again and all those things. Um, just like just in a nutshell. And so you'd have the link of the code is there. Take time and just like play around with it. If you're not an Android developer, it doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about this. But it's like a good example of me showing you. Like it's possible for you to have C and have your callbacks and your whole engine. There's like a whole engine that's running over here. And so you can have your engines in C. And what you do is you're literally just like calling them through this native interface. And you're literally just like, accessing them. And if you search all these things to do like JNI, you'd find them there. Um, and so that's that's pretty much what um, every other person would be thinking of and, and say, like, oh, okay, cool. Um, that's that's what it looks like. So one of the other things that is um, I guess like very key, let me share my screen again, go back to my presentation and say um, uh, that I want to share. That screen. Okay, cool, awesome. So, um, and I go to where I was. Um, oh, yeah. So, sorry, I did like comment slide. Yeah. So, when crying, my system dog is very like yeah. So, so you have a recording studio. There, we've set our features, our apps, and 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 we actually think about. It. So then, you think the the scaling. We have our effects processor, and that's how it looks like. So that was a good sample. The link um, Hannah put it. I also added here, so we we'll put it even in the description on YouTube, so that people can like take a look at it. And so that's that's how you have like your your Android app that started like this crazy idea of twenty something plus people graduating very quickly to go to you know now it can serve like millions because now now all of a sudden everyone has like needs of like features and everything like that and so you have c++ programmers as you said like when you were talking about it and in the start that you'd have these like teams and so within your team you have this expert c++ programmer who's come and then you have a musician on one side 
and and you have a guy who's like really good in like maybe this music stuff like the guy who mentioned tipping and, and so this guy can come and like they can meet together and says yeah there's this other effect for you, you can actually make make your 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 voice or any input that is like your voice input within it it could turn to someone like i don't know Beyonce or Kirk Franklin or whoever person that you like. And so you have all of these features in there. And then now when you start saying like scale, you're thinking about like money making and everything, you can also say, okay, cool, you know what? How do you make the trade-off is for these new features, if you want to send to your loved one music that sounds like Beyonce for that matter, we could easily take your voice, synthesize it, and then it comes out as Beyonce's music you know, or Beyonce sound or, or, or Kirk Franklin or whatever. And so you look like, they feel really special, like, oh my God, do you mean like Beyonce sang to me? Oh my God, this is really amazing. And so those are some of the things that you can do. So that's that's it. I know it was a very heavy talk. Um, I'm sorry. I know I usually talk fast sometimes, but like it's, it's good. I think guys are trying to like keep up. Uh, the reason I was doing it is because I learned something. I start doing slightly faster. Like people can they have to like grab your attention or something like that. So yeah. So thank you so much. Um, if you just search for that name somewhere, if you just search for it on Google, I think so you can find me anywhere. So there's no need for me to share, like this is where I am and everywhere. Um, so yeah, so if you have any feedback, so if you have any questions, you can, now's the time for you to ask on the, I, I, I don't know, maybe I think uh, the, the, the people who are moderating would, would help in that bit. Um, but I've seen like one question, um, Two questions rather. I'm saying is computer vision best for real time C. That's a question that we ask like everywhere. I'm seeing they're coming um here and also on the Q and A on that link. I think so. So so yes, um th this there's a question on like which is best, which is best, all those questions. I, I'd really like base it on on like it depends on what you want. Oh by the way, you can you can tell me about which the presentation. Please don't use profanity. Um <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so you can you in terms of like um in terms of like um uh, uh computer vision is it best for real time c plus plus like yes i would actually say it because when when you're talking about when you're talking about um when you're talking about like um uh computer vision one of the easy applications of what ezra is talking about okay so sorry sorry i mentioned your name ezra it's going to be on youtube um but if you look at one of the examples is like you you'd easily say that the, the in terms of like computer vision and and, and real time C plus uh, plus real time uh, computer vision especially is 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 like a good example is if you're using um, uh, autonomous cars autonomous vehicles or autonomous autonomous vehicles let me use vehicles for that matter ships aeroplanes and whatever and one of the things is they have to be able to like scan the environment and check like what's happening and so they have all this like machine learning stuff and so they have to like compute like this is this is coming okay so avoid it come this side this side um, in most cases of, of, of all the uh, uh, computer vision based uh, applications, you'll find that they actually do use C++. So is it best? Would you just say it, it, it's good, it's doable. Yes, it is best because again, when you talk about vision and computer vision for that matter, you have lenses and all those things. And so it's easy for you to do like that whole uh, uh, alignment or easy conversations with it. And I'm seeing someone has shared a very nice link on uh, a talk by the creator of C++ next week. Um, you can click on it, it's on the chat section. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so by the time the video will be coming out probably all that will have happened. So yeah, yeah, so I, I think for me, I, I would actually say um, huge thank you for to everyone um, for just making time out to, to like come and sit down there. Um, I'm not seeing any questions anywhere. <laughs> so. Yes. Frank, yeah, I see Roy Ford asked about which is the best platform to learn C++ algorithms. Okay, cool. I, I will tell you this in terms of like algorithm, is, um, it's always a preference. So I know people who swear that Kodos is good. And for me, I like Kodos because Kodos is really straightforward. Uh, you are uh, solving a bunch of algorithms there. And so and code was i'll tell you one of the biggest challenges is that before you get in it's already an evaluation that you're doing uh let me see if i can pull up that link so code was is really interesting because you have and remember it's practice so it's you're not gonna like learn it once and most of them is like in terms of like algorithms you, you will there's lead code there's code was uh code was is not like learning code was is mostly like practicing um 
And this is why I love it. Let me share the way it looks like. Um, you would have it looking like this. So the first time person who joins would have, again, Codos is not sponsoring this talk. I mean, I keep on, I have to like say this you know, all the time because people usually leave and they're like, yo, man, I see Codos was really sponsoring your talk. No, they were not um, to be nice. But yeah, so like this is Code Wars, and one of the things that is interesting about it is like they're setting you up, you know, and I'm not, not like pushing for it. There's also like lead code, I think so. Yeah, there's lead code um, and many others. And even if you do like I'm just like Google search and everything, this is like best one, but you can practice a lot for this. And so even if you say sign up, you have to choose to join, you must first prove your skills. So already they're telling you not only that, but you should be able to like do something. So if you choose your C++ over there, they give you a problem that you need to solve. And and could be easy, it could be hard, depends on how you look at it. It could take forever to solve it. If you click submit, it will definitely run some tests and then tells you whether you've passed or not. Um, but that's the thing. Um, and and, and it, it actually helps you, you know. See, it tells you all the warnings, tells you what has happened and all those things. So yeah, sorry, this talk is turning into my data structures and algorithms. I'm trying to move myself from that nowadays. But this is like one of the platforms that actually push you towards. And, and to be honest, I said, um, if you're a beginner who's starting out, free advice I tell you is start learning these things right now. The earlier you start learning them, the better for you. Uh, so that's that's the thing. And you can train there and you have lead code and lead code has all these um, uh, things that you can do. You have developer parts and, and then new ones coming up every day. Uh, some of which I'm probably not aware of. Um, so these two for me, I'd say they're really, really, really good for me. And also apart from that, you can also use other platforms and just like searching for uh this like c plus plus algorithms you know uh, and so you can start to like practice and say okay fine this is these are the ones that they have oh, sorry this one brings you like libraries <laughs> yeah but you can like play around with it uh, uh that way i don't know if there's any other question i hope i hope it's answered yeah so yeah there's this course here packed i think they had a free not packed uh, process or something that a free month um, yeah, but just understand one thing uh, as a summary in terms of like data structures and algorithms is there's no algorithms are just like they're very they're very abstract ish in nature data structures algorithms they're very abstract in nature but then in terms of like application you now you have to like apply them in the specific language that you're good at and that's what you'll see me saying like it's good for you to know how to do and be very small programs and then you can start experimenting now with algorithms because this is a good example of of, of what of like that example that i was giving you guys on uh, uh the multiplication one sorry the uh, odd and even yeah you know odd and even and so i personally use uh Silan currently at the moment there is a program that i am doing this is an example of that app this is the one that is here so you have a board things and all those things that I play around with that at times when I'm, I don't know, just trying to like refresh myself. So there you have it. So that's that's one of the things. You don't need to use C-Lion. There are um, the free other tools that I think you can use. Um, Codeblocks is one of them that is over here. VS Code also has, no, sorry, this is different. But you have Codeblocks, looks like that. You have Codeblocks. Um, and using Codeblocks is one of them. You can use Codeblocks. Uh, this is what I used for the longest time. And then I won, I think this lottery, I'm not paying for CLA. It's, like, it's given like a lottery, uh, won in a certain competition or given for free for that matter uh, by one of the communities. And I was like, okay, cool, awesome, yeah. So you can use code blocks, VS Code also supports it, Visual Studio supports it. And so there, there are a ton of resources that you can use for writing code on C++, yeah. Hope I've answered the questions. Yeah, Frank, I don't see any other question unless anyone may ask. Yeah, uh, it's, it's always, it, it either means people really understood or it just flew by. <laughs> I hope people really understood. <laughs> yeah. And Ocheng said, great talk, Frank, and he thanked Lux Academy for organizing. So he said the talk was great. Ah, thank you so much for attending. And thank you so much for organizing. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, okay, even me, I'd say thank you. It was great. I really learned. Indeed, it was a deep dive into C++. I gained even the complex, I won't say complex, but more deep, deep details about C++. And I think everyone have learned something new, something, something that one will perfect on. And we say thank you, thank you, Frank. Thank you for teaching us. And I think now if I give Harun to conclude for us. And Harun, thanks also for the invite to speak by the way. And, and for you guys also for showing up, just before I things here. Thank you for showing up. Uh, one thing is for you guys showing up. It's another thing for someone to dedicate their time to come and listen to this talk to attend this session. So I'm only saying it's a privilege. And uh, yeah, and thank you for the opportunity, Harun and Lux Academy. Hello everyone, you can hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so thank you. And I will start by thanking you, Frank, for your time. I will also thank everyone who created time to listen to our session. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say, it was a very insightful session, and I would like to apologize. There are somewhere I unmuted my mic. By mistake, I didn't know I'm causing trouble. I just uh, saw it in the chat, so sorry for that. The other thing I would like to welcome anyone who wants to explore C++ in, in depth. I think in July we will have a bootcamp at Tech Academy. And it will be basically about C++ and data structures and algorithm, but our main focus will be on C++, especially for machine learning. But also we will try to get someone who can do a few sessions to train learners on C++ for software development, like creating com common gateway interfaces and other application like how to make your application more uh, scalable. Yeah, we use the word scalable in the poster. So how you make our software scalable using C++. So Frank, thank you very much. Everyone is welcome in the boot camp. We are looking forward to having you in more and more sessions, Frank. I think you'll create time for that. Yeah, thank you. I can see. Yeah, yeah I will. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Actually, your motivation to many people. Uh, people ask me to organize the event so that you can come and talk on something about scalable software, especially in a high level language like Java, uh, like C. So, thank you. Uh, we can add the meeting there, but you're allowed to. Remain for a few minutes to interact with people. Yeah, and also remember to follow Lux Tech Academy on Twitter. Lux Academy, I think I shared the link again for more updated bootcamp and more sessions. Then, Frank, I hope I will repeat this. Uh, we look forward to having more sessions with you. So, thank you. The, 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 the event is over. So, you'll get to the session, the recording session by tomorrow or today evening on YouTube, so we'll be sharing the link. Thank you.